Now today's little tutorial for you is an easy watercolour greeting card, with a little bit of pen work thrown in as well. Let's get the bushes wet and let's get started. Okay, the first thing to do is draw some lines on the paper. Now make these more sort of oblong really, you can make them square, whatever shape you want to make them really. And to be honest with you, they don't have to be exactly right, they really don't. So you don't have to get your lines exactly measured out right down to the millimetre. Just draw out some rough shapes that you want to make for your cards, okay? So if you've got a square card, obviously make them square. If you've got a round aperture card, then make them round. It's entirely your choice. So let's go for some French or some green first of all. And I want this to be more of a watery consistency. A little bit more water. And make it a little bit more than you think you'll need, because there's nothing worse than running out of paint. I know, I've done it many times. And keep washing that brush out as well, so you don't taint your half pan paints. If you're using tube paints, then you find this a little bit easier in that sense, to save having to re-wet those paints. Now my half pans have wetted numerous times. Okay, as for the other colours, I'm going to go for olive green, again to more of a sort of watery consistency. Lemon yellow, it's quite a nice colour, I like lemon yellow. Alizarin crimson, and I'm going to go for some indigo, that's quite a nice colour, so I do like indigo. And then a little bit more lemon yellow, mm, got a bit of indigo in there, oh well, never mind. <laughs> doesn't matter and then some burnt sienna as well just kind of top it off and change that water as well especially on this stage because we need some clean water now I'm going to use a size 8 brush and this is one by Rosemary & Co and it's a spotter red dot series hmm, quite a nice brush actually I do like this one so we've got quite a nice tip on these okay clean clean water wet your brush take a little bit off and then start wetting that paper. Oh, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I'm gonna take off some pencil first. I've noticed my lines are a little bit too, well, a little bit too dark. I know you can barely see them on the camera, but I don't want much of these lines showing through for the painting itself, so, so I'm gonna soften these down so we can just about see where they are. First thing to do is wet the paper. Take your time, go around that shape, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You have to get it exactly right between those lines. Now I'm going to go for the French Ultramarine, starting from the top, then gradually working my way from the top all the way to the bottom. Now because I've already wetted the paper, that means the paper will stay wetter longer and give me that little bit more working time when applying this paint. And again, I'm not trying to be too precise with this. You don't have to. I want it more of a kind of relaxed painting, sort of a loose style painting really. So back and forward, back and forward, all the way down the paper. However, when it gets so far, you can see it's getting lighter and lighter. And that's because I'm picking up the water on the paper anyway. So that's more of a gradiated wash. So let's get some olive green, let's pop some of this in there. Look. So starting from the bottom, I'm going to work my way up this time round. Now what you can do in this case, you can actually turn the paper around as well. And then you'll find it will flood into the blue quite easily. Whereas because my board's on a slight angle, my paint's running downhill, and because of that, it's not going to fade quite as much. But I don't mind. It's the effect that counts at the end of the day. And it is, as I said, a fun, easy painting to do. And gradually blend the two together. Now, we're going to be careful of, if I go back to the blue now, especially higher up, I'll have green in there. Hello, hello. Now, we'll go for the next one, and we'll do the same process by wetting the paper first of all, working away around the shape, Look at where it shines as well, because you can see where you've missed as well. So if you put your head to one side and you can see where the shine's on the paper, you can see where you actually missed on that paper and you need to add a little bit more water in those areas. So we've got lemon yellow, a little bit of a glittering crimson in there, and even some indigo at the bottom to create more of a purpley colour. Now, the blend on this one for the glittering crimson doesn't blend quite as well, but I don't mind, it's an extra effect at the end of the day. As for the last section, I'm going to go for a little bit more French Ultramarine, a little bit more of the Elizabeth Crimson, mix them together, then some more of our kind of greeny yellow down the bottom there because I had some indigo in there, and then some burnt sienna. I also splattered a little bit of water as well on the last section. And then simply give it a dry. Once it's nice and dry, grab yourself a waterproof pen. So these are the ones that when you do draw on the paper, that it doesn't blow when you have that watercolour over the top. Now the first image I want to draw is a very simple feather. Now I want to get the curve of the feather, but the problem is I'm left-handed. 
and my paper's the wrong way around. Turn it over so it's upside down and then you can get that lovely curve on your wrist, the natural kind of arc that you've got to create those smooth lines. So you see what I'm doing here, just by very carefully, very carefully, just pulling down, using my wrist movement to be able to do that with. Then draw out the tip of that feather as well. Okay, turn it back around again. They can start to draw the feather around the image. Now again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This one certainly isn't, but I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Just create more of a sort of feather effect shape. Because don't forget, these sorts of things you can use for bookmarks as well. Imagine doing a longer version of this, of various colours, multiple colours in fact. Can you imagine what you could do with that? And you could also use them for gifts for friends and family as well. Let's just do the other side. I'll speed that one up a little bit for you as well. Okay. And you can see it just by creating some very simple cartoon effect images. That's all I'm doing here. On this one section, you've already got yourself a nice drawing and a background picture as well. Now, the second one, what I want to do is draw a bumblebee. Pardon? I want to draw a bumblebee which I can have flying away from some words. Now, so just draw a very simple, a very simple cartoon effect again, and fill it all in with your black pen, a few little dots here and there, and then write whatever you want from happy birthday, happy anniversary, and so on and so on. Now, if you do like this video, remember to click on that like button and also subscribe down below. At least that way, when I do produce a new video here for you on YouTube, you shouldn't miss it. Now, the third one, what can I do with this one? Hmm, I don't know. Um, I think about that natural arc on my wrist again. Okay, so here we go. I'm thinking about bull rushes. Just something a little bit different. So again, a nice curve because you're using my wrist to create that curve with this fine pen. And by doing so, what you can do is create quite a lot of shapes overlapping one another at the same time. And then you want to draw the bull rush itself on the top. So draw in the section on the top, fill it in, then simply do all the other ones the same way. Now you find that some of these waterproof pens do vary in thickness for the nibs. Okay, so have a look around, see what you can find. And there's some nice ones out there as well. Some are really thick and some are very, very fine. So it depends if you want to do some wet and wet washes and put the details over the top like this. So basically what you're working with is pen and wash, which is what I'm doing here. Draw a few grass blades over the top as well, overlapping those lines at the same time. And because I'm starting down the bottom of the image, you can see the idea is, is that it's creating more of a fuller effect. Now, what silhouette images would you like to see me draw for you using the same kind of idea? Let me know in the comments down below. And you can see the effects that when you make a card from this, it actually looks quite nice, doesn't it? Then all you need to do is fill it in and give it to a friend, family or colleague as a little gift just from you. Now, if you fancy having a go at some more easy watercolour paint effects, have a look at that link to the top right. I'll see you there.